time for the Q&A. It's time for the Q&A. Um, I posted two different locations where you could enter questions, so I'm going to do my Instagram questions first, and then I will go look where I have them on my um, YouTube community page a second. But first, I will be pulling out a little bit of Trident gum because y'all just love the gum chewing. And I will do some light housekeeping before we get started. If you are new here, Welcome to my nonsense. If you are old here, welcome back. Oh, jeez. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. If you're old here, double check. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit the like if you like. Leave a comment. Give me anything related to the video. Or it can just be a hello. Or a couple emojis. Anything as long as it's friendly, as long as it's cool. The notification bell, and as always, I will link my tip jar in the description. No pressure whatsoever, but anything donated to the channel is very helpful and very much appreciated. Also, if you'd like to follow me on um, Instagram, it's the same name over there, Nat Nonsense ASMR, and my other channel, Rumentary R U M M E N T A R Rumentary. F sales 15. How much time does it take to complete a video? If it's just a real casual, like, whisper ramble with no plan whatsoever. 30 minutes to film, about 30 minutes to edit, and I don't even edit that much. My, that's just me putting like a little intro on an iMovie, like doing a few things in iMovie, but saving it takes forever. I don't know why saving it takes forever. And then the other process that you go through is... Let me back up a little bit. Sometimes setup takes time too. So let's just give filming an hour and then editing 30 minutes because I'm not big on editing because I don't know how. I only know the basics. Um, and saving it. And then when it's time to load it to YouTube, you, um, Enter it, you enter your video, you title it, you have to make a little thumbnail, so that takes some time. And then you hit upload, and that can take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. So you kind of hover over your phone, like checking to see if it's ready yet. Because when it's ready, then you can click um, to make it public. So, you know, the meat of it takes And then YouTube takes its sweet time with it. What taste of music do you have? Good, great, great. I have a great taste. That is from Prince Eric. Um, there's not a lot of new stuff that I listen to. But... I'm kind of, so I'm, I guess I'm kind of old school in that way, but... Um, like grunge. I like grunge. I like old rap, a little bit of R&B, I'm not big on R&B, a little bit of old R&B. My first concert was Boys to Men. Um, I'm actually going to see uh, some some good old ones this summer. I'm gonna, I get to see uh, Snoop Dogg, who's with Wiz Khalifa, and he's with Too Short and Warren G. Um, and then I also get to see uh, Lil Jon and 
ludicrous. So that's gonna be hilarious and fun. But yeah, like even classic rock. I like classic rock. I even like Bessie Klein, like some way old stuff. So it's kind of pretty diverse, although not much of the new stuff. Because I'm I'm just nothing against the the new stuff, but I'm old, you know. So at a certain point in life, you kind of you just gravitate to your old your oldies, your own personal oldies, you know. And thank you everybody that entered questions. This is pretty fun. And nobody said anything totally outrageous either. So. <laughs> T.C. Dillion. T.C. Dillion. I hope I'm saying that right. What is my perfect self-care day? Okay. Perfect self-care day. Um, hiring somebody to come clean the house while I leave the house, right? So in the morning. First of all, the perfect self-care day would be like all of my family is on vacation, but I get the house to myself. So I know they're out having a good time, so I don't have to feel guilty. And they took the dogs with them. And they took the fish with them. And then I get the house to myself. And I hired somebody to clean it for me. Everything's perfect. The laundry's on all. Everything's done. And it's quiet. While they're doing that, I'm out getting, like, a massage. I wish there was, like, an ASMR service. <clears throat> Where you could, like, get ASMR. Like, book a massage and then... 30 minute, 40 minute ASMR, hour long ASMR service. Maybe one day. Um, and then I come home and I watch ASMR on YouTube. Take a nap. And then all evening I just like light my candles and read. And I have like a bunch of new magazines and new books. And like journal stuff supplies. That would be a perfect self-care day. Oh, good food. Good, good, healthy food. Like, I tend to feel better and more comforted by healthy food. So, I'd probably get like Indian. Indian food, maybe. Um, and like tea, coffee, whatever I wanted. Like a, um, the Madagascar vanilla coffee from Panera is my current could give advice to your 25 year old self, what would you say? Just stop dating until you're 10 years older. Because it's pointless. And people are jerks in your 20s a lot of times. Um, I mean, I was in a, a serious relationship at the time. <clears throat> serious. What a joke. I guess basically I'm saying leave him and don't talk to anybody for like 10 years. That's what I would have said. But I wouldn't have listened. Um, anything else? I mean, I'd like to say I would go back and tell myself to stop drinking sooner. However, I feel like that happened the way it had to happen. Like, it happened in its own time and for the right reasons. So... Like, just quit dating, just have fun with the kids, and I probably would be so far ahead if I had just focused on myself instead of trying to help others out that were never going to help me back, you know? And that was from Welcome to Zarba. Trust Productions official, what inspired you to start making ASMR, and how has it affected your life today, good or bad? So, when I, I've always loved ASMR, even before I could describe, I've had it since I was little, the effect, before there was a word for it. Um, 
and I didn't know it was like so big on YouTube. That was just amazing when I found that out. Then when I got pregnant with my toddler, he's a toddler now, I was miserable. Miserable. Like, I was sick the entire time. It was the worst pregnancy ever. Um, it never got better. The only time I felt okay in that pregnancy was my last two weeks. They really didn't even give me much to go on as far as why I felt like that. And there was nothing they could do for me. I only gained 13 pounds. And he weighed about 7 pounds. So he was fine. I wasn't. But I was miserable. Like, I was to the point of tears at work. Like, I could not get through the work day. So I would put it on, like, in my work breaks. And I'd put it on at home. And it just, it was literally the only thing that was keeping me alive. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I had zero quality of life. The only, that and the fact that pregnancy doesn't last forever, so I knew if I could just keep pushing for, it's almost a year, you guys. They call it nine months. It's four, well, I had him two weeks early, but pregnancy is 40 weeks. Okay, so I think calling it nine months and then you feel you're still really, like, not okay for another six weeks. So, it's minimum a year of not yourself. If not, incredibly sick. And I was the incredibly sick side. So, I said, well, as soon as this baby's old enough, I'm going to start making ASMR too. Like, when he's old, a little bit, like, older and kind of self-entertained, well, that never happened. He still isn't, but I just started making it anyways. Um, how has it affected my life today? Good or bad? Good. Good. Of course, there's like a few random things, like random trolls or random frustrations that come along with it, but I love, I love everybody that's in my, you know, my subscribers that's in the ASMR community. Like, so far, I, I really just, I can't complain. I love it. I, I couldn't have made a better decision. And I hope that I can do it for years and years to come. And then I keep growing. Do you have a regular job? Oh, this is from um, Sarah Boaz's. Boaz's. I hope I'm saying that okay, Sarah. Do you have a regular job? And if so, would you like to share with what? Love your content. Thank you. Um, I have a regular I do cosmetic tattoo, so I do like the eyebrows, eyeliner, lip pigmentation. I also offer other services, teeth whitening, um, teeth gems, lash lifts. And that's my main regular job. Um, for them, I've been doing it for almost a decade. I think this is my eighth year, so I, do, I love parts of my job. I do. But there are parts I'm burnt down to. There are. I hate the marketing side of things. I hate. It's very saturated now. There are people charging next to nothing. I can't charge that because I'm a real business. I have like, once you get to this level of having a business, you know, you have all these things crushing down on you. You have your business rent. You have all your inspections, your insurances, your, your product, like all this stuff. So... You know, you just, you can't go any lower than what you are. And you'd be miserable if you did, so. It's, it's, that's the side of things I hate, but like some months are really good and some months are really crappy. Um, kind of at a phase in my life where it's like, how much of my life do I want to put into that basket, you know? So I'm in the middle of some other things at the moment. I'm not going to give up what I do and what I've been doing, but I'm going to compartmentalize that and we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, stay tuned. What kind of, this is from Luce Van Hoogdala, and I hope I said that right, Luce Van Hoogdala. 
What kind of ASMR do I like? Um, magazine flip throughs, whisper rambles, mukbangs, mukbangs. I always say that. <laughs> um, unintentional. My friend Paul, he doesn't even know he likes ASMR. He was showing me these videos. And it was like cleaning horse hooves, like shaving down like horse hooves, and I was like, bro, this is ASMR. He's like, it is? I was like, yes, it's visual, and there's sound, but yes, if this is what you're watching to fall asleep, this is your ASMR, and I liked it too, so I might, I might, I need to ask him what, what it's, like, it's got a name, it's like a whole community of like hoof, hoof watch, hoof care watch, hoof. So, those are pretty much my top. What I feel like is lacking, that I, when I get hold of one, I'm like, ooh, is like journal flip-throughs, or journal flip-throughs. There's a lot of them that are no talking, but I want somebody to talk about their journal. I wish there was more of that, and I suck at like, junk journal. Music Exec 70. What are your top five horror films? Okay, I screenshotted those, so hold on. <clears throat> I think I screenshotted more than five. So you get a few bonuses. So I put, oh yeah, Green Room. Green Room. Punk rock band becomes trapped in a secluded venue after finding a scene of violence. For what they saw, the band themselves becomes targets of violence from a gang of white power skinheads who want to eliminate all evidence of the crime green room that was from 2016. Get Out. Everybody knows what Get Out is. I loved Get Out. I like A Quiet Place. That was one of them. The Rental. The Rental's really good, you guys. The Rental. Two couples. It's on Netflix. Two couples on an ocean, oceanside getaway grow suspicious that the host of their seemingly perfect rental house may be spying on them. Before long, what should have been a celebratory weekend trip turns into something far more sinister. Give it a watch. World War Z. Loved the movie. Loved the book. The book is so different than the movie. The audiobook is really good. It's got a full cast. Silence of the Lambs. Definitely. Frozen is my favorite wintertime themed horror movie, and it's about being trapped on a ski lift. 28 Weeks Later, classic. Happy Death Day is kind of like my cheesy horror, my favorite cheesy horror. And Sinister. Sinister. So those were the first few that came to mind, but there's a lot more. Okay, let me go back into my Instagram. So that was music exec 70. Oh, my celebrity crush, my celebrity, female celebrity crushes, Issa Rae. Issa Rae is my top favorite celebrity girl crush of the moment. Um, what is your favorite ASMR trigger and in which, which state do you live? Um, currently I live in Iowa, but I work in Illinois, like Chicagoland, so actually live in both places um it's hard to explain <laughs> how i manage that but i do and my favorite top trigger like gum chewing i think like light gum chewing is my favorite even heavy gum chewing or like mukbang mukbang whatever the word is you guys So that was from Ra Rawez Rizgar. I hope I said that right. Rawez Rizgar. Okay. So that was all of my Instagram. Oh, no, no, that wasn't because Nicholas had asked me a question, but I got to go find it.
what was my realistic dream job in my 20s and how does it compare to what I do now? Um, realistic dream job in my 20s, I have, this is going to sound odd for this to be a dream job, but everybody has their own dream job. I get almost like an ASMR sensation when I watch people do office work. So I wanted to do like office work. I wanted to stick labels on things, write on things, tap on things, answer the phone, be sassy, chew gum, like that. I still would. I'd still love to do that if I could find a job that, you know, had good hours <clears throat> and good pay, stuff like that, but that's not easy to come by. Okay, so that is my Instagram question. All right. I made my way over to my community page and Stephanie Michelle 9967 what's the worst experience I've ever had with a client I've had a few um, I had one that would just show up without appointments my appointments for cosmetic tattoo are about two hours a piece so to think that you can show up and I can fit you in squeeze a two hours out of what out of what and I would be like you have to make an appointment I should be like well no you have to make an appointment I'm, I cannot see you right now so she kept doing that and I told her that I was no longer able to see her anymore which was fine I even moved locations because my whole salon moved. And I was like, okay, that lady's going to be out of my life forever. And then one day a dude called and made an appointment for his wife. And guess who showed up? It was her. And so I had a talk. Like I sat her down and I had a talk with her. And I was like, if I'm going to take you back on no funny business. Because she was already there. That was, that was the last time I saw her. I did service her because she had made the appointment while her husband had. But she didn't come back after there. Has a client ever tried to scam you? Oh yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for eight years, so there's been a couple times where weird things have happened. You know, bank chargebacks or... The bank, the bank chargebacks are usually, like, that's just a scam. You got the service. I have pictures of your before and afters. But a lot of times banks do side with the um, client. And if you make a fuss about it, sometimes the bank will drop you, drop your business account. So. Have you ever had to go no, no contact with a narcissistic, toxic friend or family member? Um currently no contact with my stepfather I probably should have been no contact with my real father as well I do get little twinges of guilt now and then but what I have realized and what I'm stand ten toes down in on is that if I have set up a reasonable boundary and you continue to push over boundaries like it means nothing to you and then we have to like split for a while I'm not going to feel I should not feel guilty about what you did me trying to preserve the relationship was saying hey no more of this so you made the choice to do more of this so you, you know you was in the, the narcissist it was completely reasonable for me to ask you not to do that you just kept doing it so you made the choice now they'll flip it any kind of way they want to although right now <coughs> I haven't really heard anything about that from from his side but so yeah I, I really should have done all this a long time ago with my real dad who has who is deceased now and what they do, never mind. 
you know what they do. But they they turn into the victim, you know, and it is what it is what it is. You just cannot worry about what they're gonna do. When you say enough is enough. Like you've been through enough, <laughs> you know. Did you ever try to get sober before you officially got sober? I mean, every time I would feel like crap, I would say, oh my god, I'm not doing this again. I cannot drink like this anymore. Like, this is terrible. I would just cannot put myself through this, and I would still keep doing it. Like, I'd, I'd be fine for like a week, and then I'd drink again. It was just, it was stupid. Um, for me, the first time that I like made the commitment and told everybody I'm getting sober and started going to a few meetings that really was it for me I mean you know anything can happen but that that was it for me and my drug of choice which was for me alcohol but it can be anything anything can ruin your life um and become unmanageable so for me it was alcohol so when I finally told everybody like I'm done I cannot do this then that really was it for me. Okay. ASMR X Linda. ASMR X Linda. Do you consider yourself to be an introvert or extrovert? I'm definitely an introvert. When I'm alone, I'm an extrovert. I'm an extrovert for myself. And that's about it. No, I'm an extrovert, like, around my kids. In my home. But when I'm out and about, I'm not, you're not going to catch me trying to draw attention or anything of that sort. What made you start creating ASMR content? Um, kind of went over that in the in another question where I just, I watched it my entire last pregnancy and I made the choice then like, okay, when things get settled, I'm going to start making ASMR, and I did. What are your favorite triggers and least favorite triggers? Um, I already answered that too, so I won't answer it again, but... And least favorite triggers, I have not answered that. What is my least favorite triggers? I don't like tapping on metal objects. I don't like hearing metal tapping. I'm not big on liquid sounds either. Yeah, I guess those are my least favorites. Leanna and Company. Leanna and Company. Is ASMR your full-time job, and do you ever plan on doing anything different? No, it's not my full-time job. I probably put maybe 15 hours a week into ASMR. And then my other job is not totally full-time either. It's three days a week, so three days a week at work and like one day or two days of doing other stuff that I don't need to be at work for, just like online stuff and ordering and bookkeeping, all that other stuff. What made you start ASMR? I answered that and then favorite ASMR creators. So I have a ton, a ton of favorites, but I will just tell you the ones that I watched while I was pregnant. So like the ones that got me to want to create, because I need to do a whole separate video about my favorite ASMR channels. But when I was pregnant, I would watch uh, my ASMR addiction. My ASMR addiction was like my, like it was on all the time. Cat eyes ASMR. I still, <laughs> she hasn't filmed in like a year or two, and I still watch one every day almost. Um, and back then, I would watch a lot of no talking ASMR, and I never watch no talking ASMR anymore. So it's weird how like your ASMR tastes evolve, you know? Um, Mauve, Mauve ASMR, and Peace and Serenity ASMR. Like, those were all my pregnant obsessions. 
Okay. What is your skincare routine? This is Monica Keller. Monica Keller. Monica Keller. What is your skincare routine and what are your face creams or treatments? Okay, this is boring. You're gonna be you're gonna be like what? Pons. I use pons. P O N D S like probably everybody's grandma uses. Pond's cold cream, and then I'll use like any kind of face wash. Um, I usually get my face wash at like Marshalls or TJ Maxx, whatever I can find that's on sale. So I'll use the cold cream to take off some makeup. I'll double wash my face with whatever. I mean, I've been known to use a bar salt like a dude. And then I will use Pond's lotion. And that's it. I'm not really good. Oh, I'll exfoliate and I have no specific product. I'll just try to keep some kind of exfoliate product exfoliating product at all times. Um usually whatever is the cheapest thing I can find at Marshalls or TJ Maxx. But the only like repeat product that I usually go for is Ponds. So that's that. But thank you for thinking that it might be something special. <laughs> you can get it at It's so creamy. Okay. Thank you. Camille, I guess my question would be, if not too personal, what made you realize you might be neurodivergent? Me and Camille talk about all our like neurodivergent tendencies. Um, when my kids started getting diagnosed, so both of my daughters have got their diagnosis. My son needs one bad, but he's just not really talking about it. Um, he talks about it to me, but he doesn't want to talk about it with his doctor. Anyways, when they started getting their diagnosis when they were really little, and I was like, well, what do you mean they have this? How would I know they had it if I didn't know I had it? Like, they were the same as me, so I'm like, what? That's not normal. So that was my first clue that I was neurodivergent. Um, I had all the same things going on as my kids, and I think that's pretty common um, in women right now, or like women that are older that missed their diagnosis when they were little, is that their kids started getting diagnosed, and they were like, I didn't know this was a problem because I thought that it was normal because this is how I am. So that was my clue. And they, like, their teachers were like this, that, and I was like, okay. So, should I take him to the doctor? Like, what? And they're like, it might be good to go get him evaluated. And when you're a new parent, like a new parent, but you go through this, like, almost, oh no, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not a letdown, it's just like a, how will they survive? But when you learn more about neurodivergence, um, and you're getting them, like, diagnosed and they get help and, and then you do too, it, it gets better. You know, you, you learn, like, little hacks and you learn why you are the way you are and you can make, you know, friends in the community that are similar to you. Um. What are some of your favorite ASMR channels? <clears throat> ASMR X Linda, Neon Moon Whispers, um, Shy Guy, Old School ASMR Sounds, the ones that I mentioned, you know, earlier. I hate doing this because, like, after I film this, I'm going to forget and be like, oh my god, I forgot to say X, Y, and Z, you know? So, ALB and Whisperland. ALB and Whisperland is probably the most product, like, biggest production channel. Most of my channels are kind of like, like, little conversation, like, just a little, like, a smaller, like, one-on-one -on -one type feelings. But ALB and Whisperland is more of a elaborate, you know.
Huntress. Oh, that was, sorry, did I say that? That was Katie Sleeps 2783. Thank you, Katie. Huntress says, damn it, I'm jealous of how pretty you are. Looking forward to the video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Callie the Egyptian. I'm curious if you've always been a business owner or if you've had other jobs or career history. Oh my god. Yeah, so I've been working since I was 16. Never didn't have a job. Except for a little while when I was pregnant with my first. God, what haven't I done? I'll just ramble off a few. Like my first jobs. I worked at a clothing store. I will never work retail again. It's not for me. It's not for introverts. And I don't want, I can't work in fluorescent lighting. I've worked at a car wash. It was a grueling job. I used to dry cars. I was like 16, I think. I used to dry cars at the car wash. And you, like, back then you just worked with a bunch of criminals because car washes hire criminals. So it's kind of weird that they put criminals and teenagers together. Whatever. Nobody bothered me. Looking back, I'm like, maybe that's why I'm the way I am. I did some rough things when I was young. Um, like later on, I got into the industry and I've done like bartending and clubs and stuff like that. So, yeah, a lot of different, different, way different. Hot sauce, one eight eight hot sauce. That's hot sauce with two D's. Two D's. What quality do you enjoy the most about yourself? I can solve problems. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a solver. It kind of sucks because people will come to me and they'll be like, I have this problem. I'm not a listener. And some people see that as rude, like, oh, I just wanted somebody to listen. I understand. So go to that friend for that. Right? Don't make me be something I'm not. Come to me when you want me to throw a few ideas out. You want the listener friend, go talk to her. But I can, I can solve some problems. I'll figure it out. I will figure it out. Matthew W. Balmer of 8425. Did you ever try doing four ice cubes, peppermint or spearmint gums on the, at the same time? Do you think you could manage to do them for at least one minute without your mouth burning off? I might be able to chew four spearmint, but I don't think I could chew four peppermint at the same time. Do those cubes come in cinnamon? I don't know. Some of my favorite movies. Um, Trading Day has always been a favorite. I'm blanking out on this one. I know I am. This is one of those questions like, what is your favorite book? And I'm like, Day train spotting. I like, you know, addiction fiction is one of my genres. So, like, train spotting, spun. Like, they make you feel, they're like fever dream movies. They make you feel disgusted. Disgusted, disgusting, but like, um, Shutter Island. I love Shutter Island. Like, a bunch of 80s movies. Goonies. I watch Goonies like every year. Apocalypto is one that I tend to watch like once a year. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's just a few, but I have a lot. Are you Illinois native? How do you like living in Illinois? Earthshaker 1965. So, um, I was born in Illinois. I still live in Illinois part-time, and then live in Iowa part-time. Um, I do like Illinois. I, 
think it's a pretty fun state to live in. You know, we got Chicago, but we also have some national parks. State parks? State parks. National parks. I don't know. I don't know the difference. Um, it's, it's a pretty state. There's a lot of outdoor stuff to do, but there's a lot of city stuff to do. So I do like living in Illinois. Um, I'm close enough to Chicagoland where if there's no traffic, 30 minutes, and if there is, it could be hours, you know, <laughs> just typical city traffic. So I do, um, well, I didn't really get to get into the city much after I had the baby, but I've finally been able to get back into the city a few times. It's a whole hassle, you know, it's like, once you're there, you're having a good time, but getting there and getting out of there just sucks. Ryan, C932, would you ever start an OnlyFans? I don't know much about OnlyFans. Well, I can't say I don't know much. When I had TikTok, I used to see all these girls posting about, like, their... Oh, I make a living by showing my feet. Like, I make thousands of dollars by showing my feet. And I was like, this can't be right, right? So I just started watching, like, YouTubes about people selling feet pics and now uh, once I really did the research if it was just selling pictures you know like sexy type pictures of your feet or something wow cool like no big deal right it wasn't it wasn't you have to do all kinds of weird other stuff so I'm thinking OnlyFans is similar and I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody that gets into that kind of stuff um, I can't judge, but it seems like it's a lot more work than it sounds like, you know what I mean? So, like, as of now, I would say no, that seems like work that I'm not willing to do, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, I think that is all the questions, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody that put a question in, thank you for everybody that watches my videos. I appreciate you guys so much. It has been a real pleasure getting to know you just through like ASMR talk, you know? All right. And I will be doing a channel on my favorite channels because I know I left out like a good 10. I'll just go through my um, YouTube subscriptions and that's how I will tell you what I watch, you know? All right. Okay. If you are still there, I hope that you have a good rest of your day, rest of your evening, and or a good night's sleep, and I will see y'all real soon. Okay. If I missed your question, just drop it in the comments and I'll answer it down there because I was in the shower and I know that somebody asked me how I met my fiance. I don't remember who, but I'm like, why isn't that in the comments or in that section right now? It's not there, but I remember getting asked how I met my fiance. So if your question didn't get answered, drop it in the comments and I'll type it. I'll type type it down there. So I'm sorry. I don't know if there's like a glitch on if it was on Instagram or on YouTube. Um and watch tomorrow morning when when I open it, it'll be right there. But how I met my fiance, um we've just been friends. Like he's he was my cousin's grade, like at a different high school we've just been friends on social media for a billion years, you know, and just comment on each other's stuff once in a while, and then eventually when we were both single one time, he asked me if I wanted to go out, and I said, yeah, and we did, and I would say we got pretty serious, like, within the first few months, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty fast, like, we were both kind of just like, calm and not assholes, so it worked out. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we met. I know it's not like a super cool meet cute story or anything, but that that that's the truth of it. So I just thought I'd come on here and add that in. I can't think of any other ones that are missing, but now because that one I didn't see, I'm worried that there's others that I didn't see, so I'm not doing it on purpose, you guys. Just drop your, your questions in the, you know, in the comments and I'll answer it. Sorry about